How's it going everybody and welcome back to this Mantine course. In today's video we're going to be learning about how to work with the month calendar input as well as the month calendar range input. This is what we're going to be building right here. We have this Ukrainian uh, awesome calendar. We have two of them right here. So this is March, I think this is April and we're able to specify a certain date as well as go into different months as well. And right below that we have a range calendar input so we can specify let's say March the 1st all the way up to April 29th. And by the end of this tutorial, you'll learn how to style, how to work with at a high level, and how to understand how to use this component in your own project. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I've opened up the documentation for calendar, and the link to this is in the description down below. And the very first thing that we can see right here is the usage tab. And in the usage tab, we have a simple calendar. We can select from the year to the actual month and into the actual day. And you can see right down here is the usage tab. We have a set value where we can check the actual date that's selected by the user we'll on this on change. But this is a little bit wrong in the documentation. It's weird. But what you would have to do is instead of null, you would do new space date and you just call the function. After that, we have the controlled month prop. What this allows us to do is to be able to display a certain month. So in this scenario, we can either display the current month that the user is in by creating a use date variable and do new date and assign it to on month change and on month. And after that, if we wanted, if we wanted to just set a certain initial month, then all we have to do is initial month and then set it as new date. So this would, in our case, show March the 5th or the month of March. All right, so after that, we have a prop called level change or called allow level change. Basically what this means is that there's three levels to a calendar, the day, the month, and the year. In this case, if you were to set allow level change to be false, you can't actually change the actual year that the user is in. You can't change it through here, but you can't manually click on this and change it from there. After that, we have localization. Now, Mantine dates components are built upon DateJS library, where we can actually define a local data. So if you wanted to show a month from Russia with their language for their days and everything, then we can actually do that. Now, I did find a JSON file that actually contains every single, uh, well, majority of all the single countries that we need for calendars. The link to this is in the description down below. And the way that you you, the way that you would use this is that you'd have to import it initially, and then all you have to do is just say locale and define which local you're trying to, locale you're trying to look for. So in this case, it's Russia. If you want Canada, it'd be like CA, that type of stuff. All right. After that, we have the first day of the week prop. So in this case, we can actually define if the first day of the week should either be a Sunday or a Monday. So in this case, just chose Sunday. So that's why they show Sunday right here. Awesome. After that, we have the month, multiple months. This is honestly the funniest thing. I didn't really think that it would ever exist. But if you wanted, you can display a certain amount of months. And this will work for as many months as you want. I tried 123 months. From a user's perspective, it looks disgusting. From a fun perspective, it's incredibly fun. All right. After that, we have the label format. This will be able to display a format for our months if you wanted. So in this case, we're doing month, month, year, year. So this would be 03 slash 22 or March 2022. After that, we have the min and max dates. This is pretty interesting. If we wanted to set a minimum date and a maximum date for a calendar, we can do that. So in this case, we're in this case, they're doing DayJS start of month add five days. So in this case, what they're doing is they're starting from here. They're adding five days and the minimum date that the calendar can start on is after five days. So it'd be the sixth and the maximum date is the end of the month, which would be 31st subtracted by five, which would be the 26th. After that, we can also exclude certain dates that we want by using the exclude date prop. And in this case, they're excluding if the date is zero or six. Now, after all that, you're probably wanting to look at the use customized styles API. So we're actually able to customize our calendar pretty openly. And so in this case, all of this, um, all of these styles where we can edit the cell, the day, the weekday, the weekday cell, we can give it certain styles that we want. So in this case, if we were to copy all of these styles and we paste it into our own calendar, our calendar will look something like this right here. All right, now let's go ahead and actually work with this. All right, so I've opened up the app that we've been building in the past couple of videos. And the very first thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do is in my components file folder, I'm gonna create a new file called calendar example.tsx and I'm going to open up the input example and I'll just copy whatever content is on the side of here and I'll paste it here and I'll change the name to be calendar example and now inside of my app shell 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this piece of text right here inside of my inside of my app shell and I'm going to paste it and I'm going to take it to a page called calendar page and I'll make the link called calendar page scrolling down all the way to the bottom where our routes are I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'll paste it once and we're going to calendar page and the element is going to be calendar, whoops, not calendar, header, but calendar example, like so. Now let's go ahead and check out our app, go to calendar page, perfect. Now we're displaying the input stuff, which is fine. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into my app and I'm gonna go ahead and clear out all of this content since we don't need any of it. And I'm gonna scroll to the top and I'll get rid of this as well. And the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna import a calendar from Mantine dates like so and if I go back into the app we'll see a basic out-of-the-box calendar right here month March we can select a date we can't select a date we will add that functionality later so now let's very first thing let's go ahead and uh, let's have a little bit of a goof and a gaff here if I were to do amount amount of months this is where we can define the amount of month of calendars that we want so let's add two and if I go back into the app we'll see two calendars right here we can't select any dates, we didn't add that functionality, don't worry about that, we'll add that soon. Now let's go really crazy, it's at 223 calendars. And if I refresh the page, my computer is just fast enough to handle 223, after 223 my computer crashes. Uh, so right here we have 223 worth of months in calendars, and all the way up to September 2040. All right, so now let's go ahead and actually talk about how to actually select a date and see what kind of uh, what kind of console log they would give us. So what I'm going to do firstly is get rid of this amount of dates and we'll just have like two months max because I don't want to break my computer. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'll do a on change and I'll do a value and above everything I'll create a const calendar val and set calendar val and we'll do use state and we're going to set this use state to actually be new date inside of the documentation i know it says null but null doesn't actually work it's weird but so let's go ahead and add our set calendar val on our on change and our calendar val on our value and let's add a quick use effect where we will just console log calendar value and let's see what that gives us so we'll do console dot log calendar val and if i go back into the app and I open up my inspect tool. We see Saturday, March the 5th, our time, GMT, and everything like that. All right, now let's add some localization into our app. So remember this JSON file, the link to this is in the description down below. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and copy this import and I'll put it into my app. Now we're not gonna import uh, the Russian one. We will actually do Ukrainian and that is UK. Hang on, wait, 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 England, what is England? United Kingdom. Oh, it's ENGB, huh, ah, interesting. I thought the UK would be United Kingdom, but all right. So UK send with Ukraine. And down here, if I do locale is equal to UK, and I go into the app, now we should see a Ukrainian calendar for both of our calendars with the actual month and the days. All right, now let's add a little bit of styling to our app. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this styles uh, prop right here and I'll paste it into my calendar right here, like so. And let's go ahead and edit a little bit of this stuff. So if I go back into the app, we'll see how it actually looks like right now. We have two calendars, they look substantially different than out of the box. Now this is really cool. If we go into the documentation, there's a tab called styles API and we scroll a little bit down, we can actually see all of the styles API um, names that we can apply to our styles. So in this case, we can do apply styles to our cell, our day, outside, weekend, all that stuff. So if I go back into the app, we're using some of these things right here right now. So we're using weekday, cell, day. And since we're in dark mode, we can actually control what kind of color we want the actual uh, calendar to look like. So I'll do theme.colors.red uh, index three. And instead of gray, we'll do uh, blue, at four. Now if I go back into the app, we should see 
in dark mode we have our red outline in our cells and if I do light mode we have our uh, blue cells. Alrighty now before I end this tutorial I'm gonna walk you guys through how to use the range calendar uh, component in the library. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into my app and underneath my current calendar I'll import range calendar from Antine dates. It requires two props on change and value and at the very top I'm gonna go ahead and import these props so I'll do I'll create a new uh, use state variable I'll call it range val and set range val oops there we go and I'll do a use state this use state uh, requ requires us to actually define the type so I'll do date oops in an array block I'll do date and date and I'll do uh, new date and I'll do new date like so and down here I'll specify the actual date so I'll do range val oops not range val set range val for our on change set range val and range val all right the reason it's yelling at us is because we forgot to add the array blocks inside of the actual use state so I'll do array block there and one there and now if I go back into the app we should see a range calendar right here where we can define a range of dates now before I end the tutorial the last thing is I'll show you guys how to define an amount of calendars if you want so I'll do amount of month and we'll do like 35 and so now I can select a date range from the first this is going to be very slow because there's a lot of months all the way to June 2024 and going to our inspect tool we can see the dates that we selected so March 1st all the way to June 21st of 2024 awesome awesome so that concludes this tutorial now you should have enough understanding of how to work with calendar and range calendar how to style it as well and if this video helps you out be sure to like and subscribe and if you have any suggestions for any things you want to see in Mantine, be sure to leave them in the comments down below. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.